Hi guys, welcome back for another video today. Today I am going to be sharing with you guys five things that I did differently to lose 60 pounds. Let's get into it. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Brittany and I have been on a weight loss journey since November of the year 2022. That is when I started losing weight and I lost 60 pounds by April. So we're talking about five months, 60 pounds. And these are five things that I stopped doing in order to help me lose those 60 pounds. Now I am going to be up front. If you are new here, I did use Manjaro um, to help aid in that, but Manjaro is not a miracle. You are going to have to work to lose weight as well and do things differently than you had been doing them previously. So wanted to put that out there, but let's go ahead and jump right on into it. So the number one thing, and these are really not in any particular order, but the first thing that I did to aid in losing weight is stop drinking. Now, I was never a heavy drinker, but I would have a couple glasses of wine, a couple White Claws, whatever on the weekend. And what that did to me personally was it caused me to be hungry and it caused me to eat. I am a hungry drinker. So if I have more than one alcoholic beverage, I tend to get like the munchies, I guess, and I eat a ton of food. So it's not necessarily the alcohol that's the problem. It's all the food that I eat after I drink or while I'm drinking. Like I'm somebody who's eating as I'm drinking. Um, my sister is actually the same way. And so I knew when I was starting this journey that that was going to be half, that was going to have to be something that I gave up for a while so that I would be able to really focus on not eating 3000 calories in Cheez-Its while I was having a few alcoholic beverages. Now I will say that there have been a handful, probably less than five times since I started my journey that I have had a drink, but I always stop at one because I know my limits and I know that if I go past one, I'm going to eat a lot of food. So alcohol definitely is a no go for me on losing weight. The number two thing that I stopped doing, and this one might be controversial, but I stopped with the heavy workouts for years. Previously, when I had lost weight, I would run five, six miles at a time. My body always hurt. My knees were always sore. My back was always sore. I always had like a lot of tension in my shoulders. And not only that, it would make me hungrier and make me want to eat more food. So when I started this journey, this time to lose 60 pounds, I went into it with a new mindset of, I don't have to kill my body. I don't have to over exercise constantly for one, two, three hours every single day in order to lose weight. I really adopted the mentality that food is 80% of it and exercise is 20% of it. So I adopted lower impact exercising as in walking. I walk a lot. I, every, um, I like to walk several miles at a time, a few days a week. So I'll walk three miles three days a week or whatever. And then I do like to do some lower impact body weight exercises, squats, push-ups, jumping jacks, things that aren't going to be super hard or difficult on my body and it's not gonna wear me down more. Um, for me, I have found that this works best to not over exercise because it just in turn makes me hungrier. Number three, again, might be controversial. I stopped forcing myself to eat breakfast. I had been fed this lie my whole life that you have to start the day with a meal. You have to wake up and you have to eat breakfast to get everything going, to wake yourself up, to get your metabolism going, to get your body back in functioning optimal level, right? We've been told that our whole lives, like breakfast, most important meal of the day, blah, 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 blah. I don't like breakfast. I'm not hungry in the morning. And for years I was forcing myself, I got something in my contact. For years, I was forcing myself to eat breakfast when I didn't really want to. I didn't like it. I was never hungry. It most of the time made my stomach upset. So I stopped doing it. I have not eaten breakfast. And this is actually before four year, before I started losing weight. But really after I had my daughter, my youngest, about three years ago, and I was pumping with her, I just didn't have time to eat breakfast. And before I knew it, it was 11, 12 um, and then I would just eat lunch and that sort of is how it has continued again back when I was running all the time I would eat like 
a huge like five, 600 calorie breakfast in the morning to fuel the run that then made my body feel like crap. So I was doing it all backwards for what my body needed just based off what I'd been told by other people, what other people had told me I needed to do. Um, and that's not always what's best. I feel like anybody who is going into losing weight and wants advice from others needs to look at many sources, watch a lot of videos, try to find somebody whose body type and ideas and goals and the way their body functions matches yours and follow their advice, not necessarily the advice that the mainstream people are telling you, like you have to do this right now, because guess what? That's gonna change in like six months. There will be something new, some new fad thing that you're supposed to be doing. And if you don't do it, then you're not gonna lose weight. It'll change. It always does. It has for the history of weight loss in the world. So that's what works for me. I don't over exercise and I don't eat breakfast. Um, I'm never usually hungry until lunchtime anyway. And another big thing that I've adopted, and this is not a number on my list, but I don't eat unless I'm hungry. I don't eat unless my stomach is growling. My stomach doesn't growl in the morning, so I don't eat. Number four is that I stopped counting calories. This is another one that I feel like a lot of us get wrapped up in how many calories we are eating versus the quality of the ingredients that we are eating. I saw a meme the other day that it said um, something like it's easier to convince people to eat a 30 calorie snack than it is to convince somebody to eat a 30 ingredient snack right? So they put 30 calories on it. And no matter what is in it, we're like, oh, that's diet. That's going to help us lose weight. It's low calorie and we eat it. And that is definitely not always true. So when I went into this journey, this time I decided that I was going to focus more on really providing my body with the nutrients it needed. I started taking all the vitamins. I started looking at, at things and what was in things and even things that I thought were healthy were not counting calories is not the be all end all. And also what my body needs calorically, your body does not need. We are all literally different people made up of all different cells and metabolic needs and we're all different. And so you can't follow somebody that says you need to eat 2000 calories a day to lose weight. You need to eat 1200 calories a day to lose weight, whatever. You can't follow that. You have to figure out what works for your body. My, I will say this, if you are somebody that wants to count calories, when I was losing weight, before I had um, my daughter, so this was probably five, six years ago, I lost 50 pounds that time. And this is when I did it the exact opposite of what I did now. So I was running all the time. I was counting my calories. I was um, eating, forcing myself to eat breakfast. I was drinking still on the weekends. I was literally doing everything that I'm not doing now. But I, what I will say is that I always found that if I went below like 1600 calories, I wouldn't lose any weight. So you say you have to eat 1200 and my body is like, nah, girl, we need more. So take that with a grain of salt. You have to find out what works for you and your body. But I find that focusing on the quality of the meal and the nutrition in the meal trumps calorie counting. I don't count a calorie. I just eat smaller portions and I try to make good choices. And number five, and I feel like probably should have been number one because it's the most important, at least for me, is I stopped weighing myself. My goodness, I was somebody who would weigh myself, again, back when I was losing weight before, multiple times a day. We're talking when I woke up in the morning, after I ate lunch, before dinner, what did I weigh? Before bed, what did I weigh? I would weigh myself four or five times a day just to see the changes in the day. And I would say, okay, well, yesterday before dinner, I only weighed 187. So today I weigh 185. That means I've lost two pounds. So I, I'm going to have a good weigh in. And half the time that wasn't necessarily true because your weight changes all the time and day-to-day -day fluctuations for me do not help me they it only hurts me it hurts my mind if i have up a pound or two i'm like oh well might as well eat the cheeseburger or i might as well eat that pint of ice cream or whatever it is that i'm wanting that day um i will eat if i get in a bad mood mental health for me is very important to my physical health. If I am healthy mentally and I'm thinking positive, then I am much more focused on making healthy decisions and healthy choices. And the scale does not help my mental status. So um, 
Again, everybody is different. Some people think the scale is a great tool. I would recommend not weighing yourself more than once a week. I do it once every two weeks just to keep a guide. And sometimes I go longer. I usually can tell when I've started to gain weight. Of course, in this entire journey, I've not had that issue, but in the past, I you can tell. Your clothes start to fit differently. If you wanna weigh yourself every day, I guess that's fine with you. Maybe you're mentally stronger than me. I'm not strong enough for it, so I can't do it. And I would recommend if you have any type of anxiety or any type of prolonged issues with your weight, just don't listen to the scale and don't look at it and focus more on how your body looks, how your clothes are fitting and the food that you are putting in your body. And I promise you will get there. Okay, so those are my five things that I stopped doing in order to lose 60 pounds. If you have any more tips, please leave them in the comment section down below. I would love to hear them. I'm always looking for new ways to improve my health. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you very soon. Bye guys.